Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in the guys from Fermentor. I feel like Fermentor right off the bat should be like a missing member of Gore or something. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I believe that is the the pseudonym of the drummer from from uh, oh, not Ghoul. Gore, of Ghoul. Oh, I, yes, I, yeah, I got maybe. confused. That's, yeah. a good in, that's a good inspiration. I love Ghoul. <laughs> yeah. Somebody was trying to harsh me on Ghoul and my Ghoul love this week. And I was like, um, no. No, thanks. Um, why, why would anyone try to harsh your love on anything? I don't know. They weren't a fan. They saw Ghoul open for someone else popular, and they were surprised at Ghoul being Ghoul. And I was like, well, you mm. don't get it then. <laughs> right. <laughs> Clearly, you were left out of the joke. Um, I also thought, like, Trappist, maybe you guys make beer or apple juice or something. Um, Prison Pruno, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Fermentor. Sourdough. It's the West Coast. Anything is possible. But no, right. Fermentor is straight up instrumental, technical, brutal death metal. It's a pleasure to chat with you guys. Uh, I've been a fan for a minute. Love this new record continuance coming out July 2nd. By the time this interview airs, it will be out. So uh, congrats on the eve of the release. And uh, yeah, I just like uh, what's been the like you signed with Metal Assault. What's been kind of the last little era of the band leading up to this record been like for you guys coming out of the horribleness of the pandemic well we have been uh working on new material so i mean we released continuance last year digitally um self-released and uh you know i've been trying to get the word out as much as possible uh, i mean during that time like a lot of people and bands we've been hibernating and uh, working on new material and looking towards the future. Um, but we've also been uh, recording videos and uh, playthroughs for the songs from Continuance. So um, you can find all our previous music videos and playthroughs on our uh, Fermenter official YouTube. And we have a new music video coming out uh, along with the CD version now that's being released by Metal Assault. So we've been hard at work uh, trying to support continuance sort of from a distance, uh, but also now uh, we're looking also to start playing shows and uh, get back out there. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to add also, you know, when COVID hit, you know, we, we had to really think like, okay, if we can't play shows, you know, we've got this album, we're just going to put it out digitally and then try to reach our fans with, you know, we made two fully... Uh, well, by the time this interview is being seen, three fully produced music videos plus playthroughs and really just thinking like we have to use this time as well as we can to reach as many people as we can. Right on. Uh, you know, I have said frequently, uh, perhaps broken record style for all the viewers here on YouTube of Ghost Cult, but, um, you know, anybody who felt like they had to take the pandemic time off because it was uncertain or they weren't feeling creative because, you know, they lost a family member or their career or something terrible, we're all good because like we're all humans trying to human, it. you know, human during this whole period, you know, insane Certainly. time that no one has a precedence for it except mm -hmm. 100 years ago. So not even our grandparents remember pandemics, right? So right. Um, much like this has been. So, you know, but anybody that's been, man, you know, respect that you managed to put out your record and continue to try to promote it. I have seen Dylan out there promoting it. Uh, I don't know you as well, Adam, but Dylan and I have crossed circles from different places on the, in the, on the web and stuff. And, uh, and I'm a fan of this music. So anybody who loves this music, they're gonna come find this release and they're gonna love it for real. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Word. Um, appreciate so, yeah, that. you know, uh, how'd you guys connect with uh, Metal Assault Records and our friend Andrew? So uh, we we uh, were also in Beekeeper, which is another band that uh, originally at the beginning of COVID collaborated with Metal Assault to put out um, an album. And then we signed with Metal Assault. And then essentially, I mean, you know, me and Adam go 100% in all the projects that we're in. And we fully believe in them. So we just pretty much said, all right, Andrew, you know, this is another project we have. It's called Fermenter. We believe in it. And um, is there like a noise? I don't know. Yeah. It feels like <laughs> an angry uh, animal has crawled into your car. <laughs> but it's not, it's not from me. Yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> Strange but, um, shit is going on in California. <laughs> I guess so. Um, oh, there we go. So, um, you know, so we just showed him that we just showed him that we already had an album out. We wanted to put it out physically and that, uh, you know, we just we, we showed him the stuff and he was extremely excited about it. 
and uh, you know, pretty much it was just go time and we started, you know, promoting and, you know, they've been really great, you know, helping us put it on CD. So it just, we both mutually realized we appreciate each other. So we went for it. Well, yeah, we, we're, we're just big fans of Andrew and metal assault and um, we're thrilled to be a part of the label now. Um, and yeah, it was an easy uh, choice from our side to want to continue working with him uh, coming off of uh, having a successful experience with Beekeeper. So, yeah. Right on. How did you guys uh, just in general form the band that's, uh, you know, such a world of musicians trying to find each other and, and just make a project? How did you guys connect and start this thing? Dylan and I know each other uh, for many years. Uh, we go way back. Um, we were at one point uh, somewhat distant family members. Uh, and to this day, you know, we continue to see each other at family events and such. So um, we've known each other the majority of our lives. Um, and uh, at some point, we both realized we loved metal and connected over that. And we separately got into playing instruments and started jamming together. And actually, we created Fermenter many years ago, 2008, uh, before Beekeeper. Um, but it took many years for us to figure out exactly what we wanted to do with uh, this kind of music and, and sort of what direction we wanted to go in. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it took it took a while, but that's that's how we came together. So yeah, we've put out, um, I believe, five releases over the course of 12 years. Um, you know, we've always played together. We're in multiple bands. You know, we're, we're, we're like distant cousins. So it's like we've always known each other. We've always connected. We've always just had a good relationship. We've always understood each other musically. And, you know, for Mentor, the music, a lot of it is written. It's very jam based. It comes from us just you know, working off of each other and seeing, you know, seeing what works and, you know, bouncing an idea off or oftentimes we'll jam, but we'll both have the idea to like magically stop at the exact same time and stuff like that. So it's just a good, you know, we're just, we're lucky because you're right. It is hard to find people that you, you, you know, that are talented, that you mesh with, that, you know, are on the same page. So yeah, we're just really lucky, I think. Word. It's, um, I, I, it's also not lost on me where you guys are from. It's a big scene there of like very, you know, the players with prowess and a lot of people, you know, bands spring up and, uh, you know, I'm not, it's not lost on me that that's kind of, I don't know if you guys were part of the scene there just as fans and people coming up in that area. And coincidentally, you also love this music, but uh, it's not lost on me that sometimes bands come from areas and scenes sprout up around them. Yeah. Can I actually, uh, speaking of the area, can I show you guys something? Sure. Oh, the beautiful sunset. The beautiful sunset at the ocean. I literally, I tried, my, my plan was, my because my plan was to have the sunset and the ocean as my background, but the lighting didn't work. So I had like, at the last minute I had to like flip my car around. So now I've got all this weird reflection <laughs> stuff, but I did have a plan here to, to have a sweet background, but it didn't, uh, didn't pan out the way I, I wanted. Well, I appreciate that. And I know my producer who will be editing this video will appreciate you, your conscious effort to try to have the best visual possible being in the car. It's all good. We like any aesthetic is better than no aesthetic. I've, I've interviewed black metal bands who are like you know, dark. I'm like, are you in witness protection? This isn't helpful to sell the band. Like I get you, we have a scene, you know, but like, can you help us out a little, you know? Like uh, we went through a lot of effort here for this setup. So, you know, I don't expect everybody to do what we do, but like, that's what I do. Um, but thank you, man. I appreciate you uh, Dylan <laughs> coming in with the awesome, just changing it up completely. I love it. Uh, you know, a lot of people just name check awesome bands. The scene is full of incredible bands and inspirations, but how did each of you, you know, if you want to just go one at a time, how, what was the thing that inspired you to start playing? And then what was the, was it a band or a song or a riff or an experience, a show, something that drove you into this genre? Yeah, I mean, I, I did come up in the San Diego scene. I mean, I came from punk originally. Um, and, uh, you know, I uh, I had some friends in middle school who were playing in bands. And I just thought that was really cool. And I tried to sort of integrate myself into their world and from there started going to shows and was inspired by the local metal bands uh i mean uh, cattle decapitation is is if we're trying to name check any you know they've been around for the majority of my experience in the metal scene here in san diego and watching them you know and their growth and it's pretty inspiring 
Um, but, uh, you know, finding like-minded musicians, there's just a lot of people here who love metal and who love music and it's a pretty thriving scene and there's a bunch of great places that book local bands and touring acts and, uh, you know, it's, it's a great place to be able to play music and to be able to enjoy music. Uh, and it's really supportive and a warm metal community here in San Diego. And that's not a weather joke. It's, it truly is, uh, you know, a, a heartfelt, warm community. At least that's my experience. I don't know if everyone has had that. I mean, it helps. I'm, I'm local. I grew up here. So, you know, sometimes I think if you if you travel here, if you're new here, maybe it's harder to break in. But uh, I think it's pretty welcoming. Uh, it's definitely Iron Maiden. Uh, I remember getting LimeWire. And it was like 2004. And I was like, I want to listen to some cool bands. And I was like, I think I've heard of Iron Maiden. And I downloaded Iron Maiden. And that was it. That was set. And then I bought the albums after that. Don't, don't, you know, don't worry. I did. <laughs> but no, I mean, um, like, uh, I started playing drums when I was 16. You know, I, I was gravitated to bands with good drumming. I started off with Chili Peppers, Led Zeppelin. You know, then Iron Maiden. Things started getting heavier and just... Uh, it's the only thing I've ever like really wanted to do ever since then. So, uh, you know, and then one day I heard Billy Cobham, who is a jazz fusion drummer, who's amazing and a genius. And like, uh, I just, you know, I just started getting into other sort of things, but still always having a sort of metally thrashy, you know, like, like center, but still, you know, cause like in, in Fermenter, for instance, you know, there's, there's a lot of like, you know, people say like jazzy ish stuff or, like I do a lot, a lot of rudiments or try to, you know, do, you know, different sort of like light dynamic flares that are, you know, very much influenced by Billy Cobham. So it's like a weird sort of mashup of like classic metal and, you know, like weird funky fusion stuff. Killer. Um, yeah, I uh, love Billy Cobham, by the way. Um, and uh, it's funny, I have met a quite a few extreme metal people who love like Billy Cobham and, we you know, Weather Report and, uh, you know, Dave Weckl, like not oh, yeah. heavy music people at all. Mm -hmm. like And not even like classic progressive rock people. So people don't normally name check your Carl Palmer's from Emerson, Lincoln Palmer, who I feel like is a forerunner to like yeah, some yeah. Of the stuff we have now. I, I still think I saw him in like, I'm old. So I saw him in like 1991, 30 years ago. And it was like the best drumming performance I have ever seen. And that includes Rush, who I loved and a bunch of other, you know, like all the best, you know, uh, Paul from Cannibal and all that, you know, Mashuga, Tomas. So it's awesome to always, I love hearing the influence stories because I think they do paint a picture. But yeah, you guys are sick. I, I wonder if you guys also teach or, you know, you said you guys are doing a lot of playthrough videos. Do you feel like in this genre kind of lends itself to a lot of players with skill who can, you know, impart that on others? Um, I mean, yeah, it's funny to say that uh, before COVID, I taught um, uh, essentially like a rock band class in elementary schools for like, uh, like eight years. Uh, it was sort of uh, like modeled after the School of Rock movie, but a much more realistic version. So we would break, it was kids in first through sixth grade, and we'd break them up into groups of like seven. And then we have a band, so we'd be guitar uh, guitarists and then a bassist keyboard drums vocals and you know we do like acdc songs or you know or, or or even like imagine dragons like the stuff that they're into you know what i mean but um so yeah I, i've been teaching and giving uh lessons uh for a few years now and then ever since covid i haven't done the worked in the program like actually in school but i've got like some private lessons still still going on so um yeah i guess uh it's funny, I never really thought about that, but I guess maybe you're right that it does lend itself to if you're dealing with very complex things, then it's you probably have to have a knowledge of them to be able to play them. And if you have a knowledge of them to play them, you could probably explain them maybe better. Or, you know, I think I come from a little less of an educated background than Dylan. Um, I tend to be pretty uh, intuitive in the way that I approach music and um, often, even if you listen to Fermenter, uh, often I might be doing something a bit simpler than he is. Um, but, uh, you know, I learn a lot from Dylan and I could see how certainly, uh, people who are a bit more educated, uh, might have an easier time grasping that style of music, but I think you can also approach it, um, you know, more soulfully or, or just not more soulfully, but, uh, a little more intuitively or, or less, uh, cerebrally. Uh, it just depends on how you approach music, I think.
I dig it. We're all not uh, Lieutenant Data. Um, <laughs> we don't all have computer chips in our brains. I wish we did, but uh, maybe someday. But yeah, man, uh, Continuous, it, it's a baller record. It, it's uh, really complex. And you know, uh, you know what I love about this genre is it continues to surprise me. Bands like you guys continue to surprise me. So like, you know, look, I hear a lot of records. I listen to music all day long, even while I'm doing my regular day job, I can listen to my music and, you know, make little notes and stuff and do my prep. But uh, it's refreshing when you hear something that's like, wow, this sounds like I get what they're doing, but also like I hear something really inventive and new. And that's not often the case especially as you get down drilling down into genres for me the listener and a reviewer so i appreciate you guys a lot thanks that's a lot. amazing i appreciate yeah we appreciate that in words word uh, you know like i often think also like you know even the most complex interesting band that's playing this like really you know massive stuff that's challenging every band kind of starts like a cover band so like when you guys first got together, did you just jam and make songs from scratch or did you jam on stuff that maybe you knew collectively? How'd that go? Yeah, I think I think the first thing we ever played together was Postmortem, right? Really? I think so at the at, at the Ninja <laughs> Layer uh, uh, on like a friend's drum set that uh, Wally was in another band or and is in another band, Trash Axis. So I think this was the very first time we had ever jammed and I just sort of went over and I was like, Hey, can I play your drums? And then I, 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 I have a very distinct memory of us playing postmortem, uh, but also just of us, like, you know, being at like a family dinner and then being like, Oh, no, one song when it goes like, dinner, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one too. And, you know, and just being like, Oh, you like this stuff. Cool. 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 I definitely remember both those moments. I remember that being the first time that we, technically played music together i also remember being at a family dinner and like talking to, or like listening to music in the car and like showing each other bands yeah yeah and, yeah. and also uh, sorry but yeah but wally knew a lot of like extreme music you know i i got into it like i only started listening to metal at all at like 17 16 you know and so it's like he, he was much more you know cephalic carnage and you know uh cryptopsy and all these like crazy bands that i just never been exposed to and i remember you took me to the car and i remember like listening to it and it just sounded like i was like this is whoa like this is quite, like 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 i couldn't even comprehend what i was listening to i was like wow i've never heard anything like this before like this is so fast you know what i mean like, like i yeah i i just think, wasn't that like an old Civic, like an 80s, like a 1980s Civic or something? Or? It was probably an Accord if it was oh, my, oh, the, oh, yeah, my yeah, first yeah. cars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I do think that we jumped right in, like once we actually started playing music together, I do feel like we jumped right into just creating. And, and that, that's the way I always approach music. I've never been much to cover songs. I just always wanted to create and write music and collaborate with my friends. Um, and when Dylan and I after that first sort of just jam around at our friend's house, we met up at a studio and jammed every day for a week, uh, or excuse me, jammed for a month every week, uh, and then recorded at the end of it. And that's our first uh, Matanza demo that you can check out on our band camp. Um, but uh, we never really delved too much into covers. We just immediately started collaborating and seeing what our chemistry could create right on right on you know and luckily we're in the most vaccinating you know vaccinated place in the country i think it's a good thing um when do you guys think you'll be ready to go do some shows or maybe you know if you think you're going to be able to tour at all behind this record no i mean we, we, we uh, we're already uh you know inquiring with venues and stuff about shows and like you know the fall you know september october i think touring I'm not so certain about touring specifically, like actually going on the road and doing, you know, because that's a little bit more uncertain, you know, just touring itself is such an uncertain thing with cancellations and like, you know, so uh, I don't know about that maybe next year, but shows, you know, we're, we're literally like looking to book shows right now, you know, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're vaccinated and ready to rock. I love it. I love it. I always like to uh, wind these interviews down with a wild card question. And so uh, the one, I, I picked one for you guys, which is always fun. I like to call it day job for a cowboy. 
no pun intended. Well, it's a pun intended, but like, yeah. <laughs> What's the worst Joe job outside of music that, you know, obviously music being your love, the thing you love. What's like the worst job you ever had? Uh, I used <laughs> to sell, I used to sell racks of greeting cards to like postal annexes and like liquor stores on consignment. So like, I used to like walk into a liquor store and be like, hey, like, you know, we, we can put a rack of greeting cards in here and it's not going to cost you anything. And they're like, okay. But I, by the time, by the, like, by the time I, I didn't like doing it because I'm not, I, it's funny. I learned through being in a band. I am not a good salesman unless I believe in it. Cause I am a, I find I'm a pretty good salesman with my bands and stuff. Cause I believe in it. But by the end of it, I would literally go into like a florist and I'd be like, do you want cards? No. Okay. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> you know, like I just, I, I, I hated that job. I've had a few terrible jobs over the years. I've had so many, but uh, the one that comes to mind is a telemarketing job, which was one of the first ones I ever did where I was calling people up to donate money to the volunteer police department or something like that. And I would call someone and be like, hi, do you want to uh, donate money to the volunteer police department? Like, man, I just got out of jail. I'm not donating to the volunteer police department. Um, and I'm pretty sure I lasted a day there. Uh, so, and, but also I was very young, but I've had a few other, t you know, I've taken a, any job I could for so many years, but yeah, that was one of the worst, I guess. Yeah, that sounds brutal. And uh, any job, you know, there are like terrible jobs that are just terrible in and of themselves. And then there's like the not strategically making sense task in life that you're like, why am I doing this? So that sounds like you guys had a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Well, let's keep the, the brutalness out of the, the Joe jobs and into the music. That's what yes. I'm all about. And yeah. uh, congratulations on getting this record out on CD. I'm super looking forward to the next thing from you guys. But in the meantime, I feel like this record still got a lot of legs and I hope people get to appreciate it and pick it up and you get a lot of reviews and, and some props for it because it's killer. Thanks so much. That means that means everything to us. Thank you so much. Anytime. Congrats on everything, guys. And uh, we'll catch up with you hopefully at a show as soon as possible. Yeah, we'll definitely know when there's a show. Enjoy your evening. Thanks for hanging out with Ghost Cult. I appreciate y'all. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having us, Ghost Cult. Thanks, Ghost Cult.